that those will be the same amount of players that you will have getting on the plane going to Milwaukee tomorrow? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it, it's not a, it's not an ideal situation. Um, one, I mean, I'm, it's great to be back though. I mean, I do, I do miss the players. I miss talking to you guys um, daily. Um, but yeah, it's, we haven't practiced in nine days and I wouldn't even consider today a practice. Um, we haven't been around, I haven't been around the guys. So we just basically just shot around and did some five on zero offense. We had eight guys, so it wasn't much, um, but we did the best we can. It's definitely a, a, a tough situation, I'm, but there's nothing we can do. I mean, there's nothing we can do. This is all, we're following in the rules and, and it's definitely it's definitely a challenge, and, and we're just uh, doing the best we can. Scotty, one more follow up: um, Is there any way that any of the players that are on the health and safety protocol can catch up with you guys uh, on this road trip? Is that your understanding? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when. My guess would be um, probably not. Uh, just looking at the some of the other teams uh, have gone through it um, with a player or two. Doesn't seem like anybody has as many players that we've had. Um, but no, I don't. I don't anticipate that. Uh, I just, like I said, we're just going to have to just figure it out on the fly. It's not. E it's not easy considering we haven't practiced in nine days uh, to start back up. Uh, you just can't just start back up and at, at game speed. Uh, you have to be very careful. These guys are world-class athletes, but they haven't done anything. It's like when you know you, you're out for a while and you have the, you have your buddies and play pickup like a weekend warriors, and we all know how that ends up a lot of times. So that's why today tonight's practice is very, 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 very light. I wouldn't even consider it a practice. Scotty, best of luck to you guys. Thank you. Da. Hey, Scotty. Um, I know the league will get through this season and you all will get through this season one way or another, but at some point, does this not feel like a season? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I've never I've been in the league for 30 years and I've never had this. I never missed a game due to a cancellation. I can't remember, uh, let alone as many games we've missed. I've never had nine days off in the middle of January. Um, we're going to do the best we can. I believe in our guys. I know, I know this is going to be a great, uh, part of the story of where we want to get to. We got guys, good leaders that are going to help us get there. Uh, but it doesn't, doesn't seem, I mean, I knew that this could potentially happen. I mean, you're always worried and it's, it's real. Uh, we did everything, uh, to the best of our abilities, but this virus is real and it's it's creative and it could it figures out a way to penetrate and it, and it hit us and it's hit us pretty uh, pretty bad. We got a pretty solid um, punches to the stomach, but we're gonna uh, battle back together. Like I said, I love the group I'm coaching. Uh, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some time to get back in the game shape. And these are the guys that are that are that are healthy. It's going to take them back to get in the game state. And then the other players, it's going to take even more. Uh, so it's, but it's, we're going to be, we're going to be fine. There's a lot of other things in the world that are, that are pretty bad right now. And, and this is down the list of, you know, tough things that we're going to have to go through. Ava. Hey, Scott. Um, nice to see you. Um, when you talk about having to be careful and account for, or I guess, for the higher risk of injuries, how do you guys go about doing that? Is that extra warm-up time? Are guys going to be on a minutes restriction? What's, uh, what can you do? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is like I said, this is, we don't have a blueprint for this. We have our entire team that was out for nine, nine days. We haven't practiced. And the last thing I want to do is put our players in a position that they're gonna they're gonna be uh, susceptible to injury. So 
That's why today's practice was not a practice. It was just basically a bunch of shots and, and get into the gym. It was almost like therapy for all of us to get together and, and, and do something we love to do. Uh, but it's tough. It's like I never had a, a situation that we haven't had nine days of practice. And that's, a, I mean, that's a long time. Uh, I have, I have, I don't like Allen Iverson because my, my daughter and my son and all their buddies send me the clips where he spun me like a top, but I would be his favorite coach right now because we never practice for the last uh, 10 days or so. So, but it, it but our, I'll tell you what, our guys came back and Pretty good spirit. It was a good day today for a lot of reasons, and and we should be thankful for um, what's ahead um, for us, for our country, and 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 we get to be in the gym today a, a little bit. But I definitely worry going forward because these are our healthy guys, and and the conditioning is definitely is behind than the, than the teams that we're going to be playing. Scott, I'm glad you're not rusty on giving us the anecdotes with the answers. That's nice. Um, was Russell able to get into the facility get, uh, this week for a reevaluation? And do you have an updated timeline for him? Yeah, he's progressing uh, into basketball activities. Did a little bit today. Uh, don't know when he will play, but he's definitely progressing in the right direction. He's feeling good. Uh, we'll love to have him back as soon as we can get him. But we're in no rush. We're going to wait, uh, obviously, until he's 100% ready to play. Uh, but he's he's definitely reevaluated. Things are looking good. Uh, he's back to doing some basketball activities. It's going to take, you know, maybe maybe some some more time. Chase. Hey Scott. <clears throat> obviously, five games postponed and. A lot of the news kind of trickled out. When did you realize that it was going to be this bad, that the outbreak was this widespread? I didn't know. I mean, it was it was uh, definitely uh, tough. I've, like I said, I've been in the league for a long time, coached for the last you know 12 years or so as a head coach. And it was definitely the toughest um, week. And I, don't know if you will ever have one of those type of weeks ever again. I, matter of fact, I know we won't. Uh, one day, um, told in the morning that uh, that Brad will not play um, due to I think it was contract tracing. That same day, Russell um, wasn't going to play. I think that was against Miami. And then one minute into the game, uh, TB tears his ACL. Uh, so he's out all year. And then after that, we get a couple of guys and then another couple of guys and then another couple of guys and it kept going on and on and on. And then you just, you're, you're helpless. Uh, you're frustrated. You're, but you're also knowing that we just have to go through it and it's going to be part of our season. And a lot of times when you go through things, it's not, um, what you're going through is how you go through it. And we're going to have to go through it together. We're going to stick together and, and build our team around what we had to go through to be able to get out of it together. And what are the conversations with, uh, you know, Dr. Medina have been like, as you guys try to come up with a plan to ramp things up under circumstances you guys haven't dealt with before? We're doing, I mean, the NBA has all the, the, the protocols calls are set the memos are there for us to read and look at and they go over it constantly with with us and like I said we do the best we can uh, nobody wanted this to happen but it happened we have to deal with it and uh, Dr. Medina has done a great job it's just like I said it's it's it's, it's around everywhere this is not this is not a hoax there's over 400,000 Americans that passed away uh, with this virus and and we take it serious um, you're, you're obviously concerned, um, but you know what we're, we're going to do. We have to still have to. We love doing what we do. I love my job. I love the, the players. I'm. I get. I get to do my job with. Uh, but it's definitely. Uh, it's challenging. Uh, but it's also going to be. Um, we're going to get through this all together. Friend. Scott, you mentioned a few times uh, just about how slow you guys, careful you guys have to be in ramping guys up before you play a game. But 
but obviously the the league is implying something different if it if it hasn't canceled that game on Friday has has there been any pushback from you guys in wanting to play that game uh, either from you or from the front office towards the league just even though you technically fulfill the requirement of having eight, eight healthy guys yeah I mean it, we're gonna do we have to do what the league tells us to do right uh, but we also get to make a decision on how we get to practice in this and that. We haven't practiced in nine days. It's gonna be very difficult. Um, I mean, think about it, we practiced tonight. We had to wait until 7.30 tonight before we can get on the court. And then uh, we have a practice tomorrow at 11. So what's that, 15, 16 hours uh, later. We're, so we're really having two practices within 24 hours. We're not gonna be able to do much tomorrow. It's gonna put us in a very difficult position to have a game. Um, Friday night. If they make us uh, play the game, obviously we have to play the game. Um, I don't know how we're going to be able to um, play it, um, but we're going to do the best we can with whatever, you know, whatever the rules or the league tells us to do. I believe in the league. Uh, we all know that this is about the players and we want to keep our players healthy and they're going to do what's right. Whatever that is, they're, they're going to let us know. And, and, how how is this process of practicing with eight guys been different for you guys? I, I what exactly are the the health and safety protocols for coaches jumping in and scrimmaging? Is that is that legal? Have you been able to do that? We we do that as best we can. I mean, we've had dealt with some injuries in the past, so we throw coaches in there. But you know, we 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 do the best we can. And with you know, all the coaches are wearing masks. Some of the players, you know, we all wear the mask before all of our workouts. Um, but it's. Um, it's tough when you have eight players and you haven't practiced in, in nine days. Uh, so to call it a practice, that's, that's pretty much a, that's a, that's a stretch. And we did, we got some shots up tonight and we're probably going to not do a little, we're not going to do much more than that tomorrow. Quentin. How you doing, Scott? Um, you mentioned how you don't want to put your players in a position to risk injury, but naturally the question when you only have what nine available guys or eight available guys is, you know, how do you handle the workload, especially on a road trip like this? Have you gotten a chance to sit down and think about rotations and minute allocations to what players, because this is a tough stretch you guys got coming up. Yeah, it's definitely a tough stretch. Um, the minutes are going to be spread out. We're probably not going to be as fast as we want to play. Uh, we're probably going to throw uh, more zones just to kind of slow the game up a little bit uh, because obviously conditioning is going to be an issue. And then we, like I said, we have a game and we go to San Antonio and then we go to Houston uh, Pelicans back to back and then we come back home after a day off to play the Hawks. So it's going to be, uh, we're going to have to be wise and I got some pretty competitive guys but I'm going to have to be uh, smart and, and make sure that everything is spread out. And it's all remains to be seen. It's all, it's all hypothetical right now. It's, we still have another day to think about a day and a half before the, the next game. And taking it off the, f the floor for a little bit, I just want to ask you if you got a chance to watch the inauguration of Joe Biden today and if you had any comments about, you know, what's going on in our nation's capital. Um, yeah, I saw it. I mean, that's the, that was the, that's the silver lining. I, I got to see, um, been outside walking quite a bit, and uh, see all the incredible, uh, things that DC has to offer and then see all the things that are taking place, um, from that, uh, outrageous, disgusting incident on January 6th, to seeing all the militaries with you know, machine guns and um, protecting. And then I got to see Joe Biden's um, inauguration speech, which was incredible. And I think the young lady is Amanda, uh, um, her her poem was just phenomenal. Um, Gorman. Yeah, Gorman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, hers, well, she, that, that, to me, that just, that was captivating. And I, I, I recommend everybody listening, spending, you know, five or six minutes and hearing her because what she did and it was just incredible. So that that's a, that was a good thing for today. 
uh, and I was just waiting after that, just waiting what time will practice be. We've been testing twice a day and getting around the city has been a little challenging. Um, but like I said, these are, these are minor problems in the, in the real world. And I always try to keep things in perspective. We all have families and we want to keep everybody safe, but there's a lot of things going on that has happened that, that are much worse than not practicing for nine days. Good luck to you, Scott. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Matt Paris. Hey, Scott. Just going back to Russell, will he travel with you guys? And is there any hope of him playing on the uh, upcoming road trip? Yeah, I mean, he will uh, travel with us and uh, just ramp up as much as we can with the basketball activities. I don't know when he's going to play. Um, yeah. Don't know. Um, don't know if it's going to be on this road trip or not. But that's we'll know when he's ready. When he's when he's ready. And then you guys have had a, a staff member test positive as well. Was that related to kind of contact tracing with the, the players or was that something outside the facility, inside the facility? Where, what do you guys kind of know about that? Well, that was, uh, it was a, what's it called? A false um, positive. Okay. Uh, everything's good. He's been negative every day since then. So uh, that was, that was uh, never good news. All right, we'll go. Last question is Zach Kakuma. Hey coach, um, the guys in the protocol, um, whatever you can talk about, disclose, but how frequently are you in communication with them and how are they doing? Uh, they're doing well. Text them um, every few days. Our coaches text them, our players text them. It's not easy for them, no question. They, uh, their symptoms vary from player to player. They're all feeling much better uh, today. I actually text all of them today. Uh, miss seeing them, miss being around them. Um, don't know when they're coming back. It, it's all predicated on you know the, the protocols that we have in place, and uh, don't know if they're going to come back on the road. I, I would probably think not, but you never know. But they all seem to be in pretty good spirits, considering that uh, you know they haven't been around uh, to get any conditioning. We did as much as we can on Zoom, but they did not. Uh, just the players that are not um, positive. So it's going to take them some while to, and some time to get in, uh, get back into condition and their legs are going to be a little heavy the first week or so, but it's just part of coming back. Brad, uh, first of all, good to see you. Um, when did you kind of realize that this outbreak was it, as bad as it was and that, you know, you guys might miss as many games as you did? Uh, Probably the same time you guys found out. I mean, it was pretty much a day-by-day -day basis. I mean, once one guy goes down, you pretty much take all precautions from there. I mean, we, every team we've played, I think what our last four or five teams have had it. So, um, you know, I guess it was kind of like only a matter of time type thing, but I didn't really pinpoint a date or anything like that. But, you know, once you've seen one game go down, you kind of knew was going to be a triple down effect from there, but I didn't think it was going to be as long as it was for sure. And as you look ahead to tomorrow night, or I'm sorry, uh, Friday, your guys' next game that you guys hope to play, uh, what do you think is going to be the, the challenge for you after not having practice for so long? Just what you said, not having practice. I mean, we haven't, a lot of guys, I mean, I have a, I have the luxury of having a basketball gym and weight room in my house, so I'm, I'm able to get work in, but not everybody has that luxury. A lot of my teammates don't have that luxury. We weren't able to get in the gym for a week. Um, so that that alters guys' rhythm, shape, you know, like that's just like a recipe for injury, honestly. Um, so, you know, I think we're fighting the league on it, but, you know, if we got to go out and compete, we're always going to do that no matter who we have. Uh, but it is going to be tough being shorthanded. You know, we already have guys out with injury. You know, now we add a huge chunk of our team, like over 50% of it with, with the virus now. So it's, you take it for what it is. And, you know, we got to, we just got to take it a day at a time. You know, we hear from the league tonight, hear from them tomorrow and see what they want us to do. Chris Miller. Brad, you're the union rep for the team. Uh, that kind of leads me into my question to you is, what are your options as a team uh, communicating with the league on obviously the shorthandedness of the roster and the fact you guys have not practiced in nine days? Yeah, I mean, we're going to fight on it. I think Russ and I probably talked to Michelle tonight and, uh, 
you know, just kind of really push her on it, push the PA on it, because the health of us is, is the most important thing, you know, and the safety of us, you know, that's, and it goes far beyond a virus, you know, it's our physical health too. And, you know, us performing at the highest of our ability on the court, you know, it's unfair that other teams have been going, have been practicing, have been playing and constant, have their constant rhythm. We haven't played in literally a week and some change. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough on us. You know, it's going to be real tough on us. Guys getting back in game shape, getting back in the rhythm, uh, you know, that's that's gonna be tough in itself. We've seen it happen before. Rachel Nichols. Hey, Brad. Hey, Rachel. How you doing? Good. A uh, slight topic change from coronavirus. If that's okay with you, <laughs> talk about something else. <laughs> doing a project, sort of celebrating Kobe Bryant, and I'm asking a bunch of guys around the league what they remember from the very first time they played him. So I don't know if that was your rookie year. What do you remember about being on the court with Kobe? It was a few things. My, my, the biggest thing is he shot the ball every time he had it. So that was probably the funniest and most memorable thing I, I loved about it. Um, two, I was always a fan of, of Kobe and Michael Jordan's footwork. And so I was always in admiration of that whenever I played him. And uh, the final thing is he hissed like an actual snake. You know, whenever he wanted the ball, he would like, he would make a hissing sound. And it threw me all the way off. Like, I didn't know that that was a thing. And, uh, until somebody literally were wide open and passed up their shot to throw it to him. And I said, okay, well, yeah, if that's all you gotta do to get the ball, maybe I might might put that into my repertoire, maybe. But uh, no, I think those are probably the three things that, that probably stuck out to me the most was just his confidence and his amazing ability to be able to get shots off, um, his amazing footwork, and then his, his demand for the ball, always. Did he say anything to you? Did you talk to him at all? Yeah, I mean, he coached me up a little bit. Uh, you know, just welcome me into the league, you know, just stand aggressive, stand the course. It's a long year. Um, you're going to have a great future and career and everything of that nature. Um, it was actually crazy because last summer he had a, a workout clinic in LA, he and Phil Handy, and uh, they actually invited me to come out, but the birth of my second born was around that time. So I actually missed that the little training camp he had. And so I kind of kicked myself in the foot still to this day. I, I missed out on the opportunity. Um, but, you know, it was an amazing story that he had, an amazing legacy he left. And uh, every time I played against him, it was only a select few times, uh, but it was it was always great. Thank you. DA. Hey, Brad, um, just to follow up a little bit on what Chris asked, um, what are you hearing from other players around the league? I think there's, I think tonight, there was a cancellation tonight with Memphis and Portland. So I think that 16 games total had been canceled. What are the guys saying about this? It's tough, man, because a lot of guys are in a position to where they want to play. Like a lot of guys are, you know, they want to play, they want to make their money. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of guys who, who are, their biggest thing is the health of them and their families and uh, making sure that, you know, they're safe. And so it's kind of a fine line between the two. Uh, you understand every side and perspective of it. Um, but it's, 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 it's a tough situation. You know, I think it's going to take a collective effort on both sides, PA and the league and, you know, and just figuring out, you know, what's the best, best thing moving forward, you know, whether it's, you know, putting a hiatus to it or putting a pause to it or, you know, whatever, or canceling it, whatever, it, you know, may, whatever it may look like, you know, I think it's going to come to us all come together and, you know, figuring that out. But a lot of the players are kind of, it's like mixed emotions, mixed feelings, you know, some, a lot of guys want to play. They want to earn their checks. You know, they want to. They haven't played since March. I'm one of those guys. You know, so they they're just itching to be out here. Um, yeah. But you know, at the same time, this this virus is is the most important thing. You know, uh, and, and keeping us healthy and keeping us safe and keeping our families safe. And I asked Scotty this before. I, I mean, I have a feeling that the league's going to power through and they're going to get through this season one way or the other, just because they've started and it's going to be hard to stop it. And you guys are probably going to get through the season one way or another, whether it's 72 games or less. But does this feel like a season to you? It's weird. It's weird. Uh, but honestly, it does. You know, when you, when you, once you're in between those four lines, uh, I tell guys all the time, like, it just, it still feels like a game. You know, even if the fans aren't there, mm -hmm. you miss that crowd noise, but the intensity is still there. You're still getting hit. <laughs> still, you know, the points are still getting put on that board. The action is still going on. So it's, it still very much feels like a game, like coming into the, the arena, feels like a game. Uh, 
but I would say going through the protocols and everything in that sense, it, it definitely kind of makes everything a little bit overwhelming at times. Um, mm -hmm. You have to get used to it, um, especially when, you know, God, like I have to sit out a game and I didn't have the virus. And, that, and so that like, that's an adjustment that's weird to me. Uh, and it's weird to everybody. So, you know, but it's, it's what we got to do. It's what we, you know, we agreed to do uh, coming into the year. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we just got to, we just got to continue to, you know, push through, like you said, we probably will. Thank you. Fred. Hey, Brad. Um, I, I don't know what your stance was on a hypothetical bubble coming into this year, but has the way this season has played out at all, has it affected your feelings towards potentially doing a bubble either for the second half of the season or the playoffs or, you know, just implementing it in some way or some fashion? Uh, I mean, I probably wouldn't be totally against it as long as, you know, we we have the same success I would say we had the first go around. Um, I wasn't a part of, you know, the bubble the first time, so I don't, I don't necessarily know how all of that, how it all worked down there every day. Uh, but I know go through it here every day, it's, it's a lot. You know, we test twice a day, at least for the last week. So that's that's very overwhelming at times. But, you know, I feel like if, if we're able to, be safe and everybody's able to just control the virus, control the spread of it. You know, I'm, I'm all in favor of it. I just want to hope. Hope is hope. Tim Reynolds. Brad, what you had said to DA a couple minutes ago, you, you had to sit out a game after the contact tracing and you didn't have the virus. What was going through the contact tracing process like for you? I mean, do, do you think it's subjective? Do you think it's fair? Just how, when you've got a missed time and you didn't do anything or didn't, didn't catch this thing, thankfully, how frustrating, I guess, is that to go through that process? I would say it's tough from a standpoint that I was already, like, it, we were, like, almost, what, half hour before tip off. So I think that's probably what was a little bit crazy. Uh, like, they just kind of just knocked me up off the floor. But at the same time, it's precautionary. It's for our best, you know, our best interest, our best benefit. Uh, making sure we're safe and good. So, you know, as much as we may complain about it, uh, you know, as far as it's, it's only for our own benefit, uh, you know, but it is it is tough because you have to test twice, twice a day. Um, you know, you have to quarantine. You can't come to the gym. You can't be around anybody. You have to kind of stay away from your family. Uh, so a lot of stuff is, is, is tough with the rules of it. You have that luxury, you have the luxury of having that home gym in your house. How how much time have you spent in that in the last week? It's crazy because I don't I try not to kill myself at home. Like I let home be home. I try not to, you know, bring work home. Uh but in a situation like this, I, I got in there a few times. I didn't overdo it. Uh, because at the same time I needed my rest. So I, I've used this as a positive uh rest of my body. You got some free things, free habit at home. Um and pretty much just Got some, just kept my rhythm going, just kept my muscle memory going. Uh, I lifted at home too. So just making sure I just have the same routine, same flow I had. You know, when the season, when they kind of cut us off. Thank you. Yep. Olivia. Uh, hey, Brad, hope all is well. Um, you're a leader for this team on and off the court, and I'm sure you've had some time uh, to think this past week. What do you want your mindset to be? What do you want this mindset of the team to be as you move forward and are able to get on the court again? Well, for one, is uh, everybody's safe and healthy. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, we play a game of basketball that we all want to go out, have success and win that, but the health of everyone as an individual is always priority number one for me. So making sure that we all come back, we're 100%. Healthy, um, you know, whether that's ailment wise, illness wise, whatever it may be, uh, think back to bruises, you know, rest being back, TV being, you know, recovered to his 100%, uh, 100% self. Uh, but that's that's what I focus on. You know, obviously, we want to make the playoffs. Obviously, you know, every team has that that mindset and that, that ambition, you know, uh, and we still have that. We still have that drive, we still have that hunger. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can just utilize this time that, you know, we can take advantage of it because, you know, a lot of our, a lot of our guys went through it. So, you know, hopefully on the back end of it, we won't have to worry about guys missing games, uh, because of the virus. Um, but at the same time, you know, we just have to 
just rile together, you know, with what we have and continue to push, you know, uh, but definitely coming out with a new sense of urgency um, on the defensive end and, and just continuing to, to realize that that's our identity. Quentin. How you doing, Brad? Um, just want to know how you've communicated with your teammates over this hiatus of time. I mean, you are a leader as well as Russ, and you've been here for the longest. How have you kind of kept guys in good spirits if you have and just kind of trudged through this nine days off from basketball and just being together, especially after you guys had just gotten some pretty significant wins over teams that people just thought you guys couldn't compete against. Yeah, it's, it's tough, man, because I'm, like I said before, our biggest, my biggest concern in a way is, is making sure the guys are healthy, you know, so it's, we have a, a group text thread that, you know, we just check in with each other and making sure everybody's good and safe and healthy on a daily, making sure nobody has crazy symptoms or anything. They need anything, uh, you know, just reach out and help. But it was even, I even offered, as Russ to come shoot the other day. I know we probably can't do that, but it's just, it's just you know, just something to do. But it's, you know, we we got what we got, you know, but I think we have a great team. Our camaraderie is good. Uh, we love each other. We, you know, there's no character issues or anything like that. But, you know, we, we try to stay in touch with each other as best as we can, you know, through our group chats, uh, making sure we're all safe. And we, got, we got a little work in with uh, our strength and conditioning coach. You know, via Zoom, you know, we, we deal the most with what we had. You know, we work with what we had. So it uh, wasn't easy, but we managed. And also, uh, you've been very vocal recently in terms of the events happening in the Capitol and in Washington, D.C. in general. Uh, was it refreshing for you today to see a new president in office and just everything that went behind the inauguration of uh, Joe Biden? A hundred percent. You know, I want to congratulate Mr. President, Mrs. Vice President. It's, it's remarkable, honestly, to, to witness his speech, her speech, and the entire presentation that they had, you know, from, from him giving his speech about unity and, you know, democracy and bringing the, the nation back together um, in a beautiful way. And then driving by, motorcade driving by the tomb of the unknown soldier and, and just seeing how many troops you know, laid their lives down on the line for us all to live, you know, and that kind of, that hit home for me. And it was special that he did that um, because it was just like, as much as we have a lot going on here in the world, like these men and women, like laid it down for us to breathe the air we breathe, you know, and they go over there and fight not for Republicans. They don't fight for Dominican, oh, I said Dominican, uh, the Democratic, <laughs> the Democratic Party. Uh, but, you know, they, they go over there and fight for, for us Americans, you know, uh, everybody, so that we can we can breathe there, we do. So, you know, that was very special in a lot of ways. Um, the poem was, was remarkable, um, very touching from the 22-year-old woman. And it was, it was, it was just very, it was, it was very hard woman to see, especially after the events we just had at the Capitol. You know, you go from, you know, two totally different scenarios of, you know, violence of, you know, rioting to, you know, a peaceful transition of power. You know, that was, that was pretty dope to see. Appreciate it, B. All right, we'll take the last question from Matt Paris. Hey, Brad, um, two things. Just one, how much time do you think you guys need in terms of just ramp up? You know, obviously it's a little bit of a difficult situation. And then two, um, just when guys are testing positive, how worried that, I don't know that you could be next, or what? What's kind of your my, your thought process there? Yeah, you always you always get nervous. You know, you always want to uh, don't touch me. You know, you always kind of have that that mindset. But it's uh, I mean, it is what it is. You know, we we kind of you just never know. You know, you just continue to wear your mask, continue to do your protocols, continue to wash your hands, sanitize. You know, social distance, do everything that you're supposed to do, and uh, you know, you just hope for the best in that sense. Um, in terms of how much time we need to come back, I mean, it's it's hard to put a date on that, you know, but I know one day is not, <laughs> I mean, I know that's damn sure not enough, uh, especially after being off a week, you know, that's just the recipe. Just think of guys just coming back to play, just being hurt, like, you know, getting your body back used to that physicality. It's just the highest level of basketball. This isn't like we're just coming out and playing rec ball, you know, so we got to respect our bodies and respect our crafts and what we do and, uh, you know, making sure that we're healthy and, you know, doing it the right way, 
uh, with the right preparation is always key and important. So we're going to stand strong on that, and uh, hopefully you know, the league hears us on it. Uh, but regardless, you know, if we got to go out and hoop, we got to go out and hoop.